Asante Yesu Kwa rema zako Na nema yako Maishani wangu Asante Yesu Asante Yesu shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men assuredly I say unto you ye have their reward they have their reward but you when you pray go into your room and when you have shut your door pray to your father who is in heaven in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly and verse 7 to 8. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard, for there are many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Today, I want us to talk about prayer laboring in prayer. So the first question we ask ourselves, who should pray? Who should pray? Who is being asked to pray? Hmm? <laughs> Everyone who has given their lives to Jesus, you are asked to pray. So what is prayer then? is communication with God, right? Communication. So where there's communication, then it means there are two parties, right? 
you are not playing like uh, children who takes a, a bottle and they are calling a hello and there's, there's no link. Hmm? We are not playing children, right? So it means that um, you are born again, you are a child of God. That's number one. And then now, your father, your daddy wants to commune with you. He wants you to talk to him and he wants to talk to you. Okay? So prayer is not for pastor alone. <laughs> Sometimes when you say, we need you to pray and to call God, and you are looking at the pastor, is like, hello, are you talking Greek? So we know how to sing, but we don't know how to pray. Huh? How many of us here have phones? Huh? Even in grandmothers who don't know how to bonyeza, they know, they know how to talk on the phone. Right? The same way that you communicate with your fellows on the phone is the same way that God wants you to communicate. Yeah? To him. I know we are coming from a background where we don't have good relationships with our fathers. But our father in heaven is like, you know, it's like when you are praying, you are afraid. Oh, he can slap me or something. Because we are coming from backgrounds that um, the relationship between a child and the father is not good. Or you don't like him. Or he doesn't like you. There's friction. So we are coming from this background and then we are coming to the house of the Lord and we are being told you have been born again in another family where there is a father and he expects you to talk to him. The way you don't talk to your father is the same way you bring the same behavior to the church or to the prayer. Because if you talk to your father, maybe... Um, once a year. So, when we talk of prayer, you may not even understand why you need to talk to him because there's no cordial relationship with your father. So, and when you talk to him, everyone is shouting, okay? So, you find now, when we come to pray, we are all shouting and we are praying nothing. Or we are crying and you are saying nothing. Can you imagine if you call your friend and you are just crying on the phone and you are just going, so instead of talking to your friend who has called you, you are crying. Huh? So even if you cry, you need to talk. So the disciples asked Jesus. They used to see Jesus every time talking, talking, talking. You know, they are like, what do you do? And he said, I always talk to my father. Then they said, okay, just teach us how to do it then. So, if you have a daddy in heaven, how many times should you call him and talk to him? Hmm? Per day, how many times should you? Today we have Christians in the church who don't even talk to God. They don't talk to their daddy in heaven. And it's a big problem because if you don't talk to your father, then it means that uh, you'll go in luck, right? If you don't tell your father that you need one, two, three, will he provide? So basically the same way, if you don't talk to your father in heaven, you'll be a child who is suffering and yet you profess or you confess to have a big, great God. So what am I saying? We must come to a place where we can talk to our father quite often. There's a man who said he, doesn't, he prays for five minutes, but he can't stay for five minutes without prayer. <laughs> so basically, what is he saying? After every five minutes, he's talking to his father in heaven, right? So, 
Jesus came to labor for redemption. The Father labored in the creation and the Holy Spirit is laboring in the sanctification of those who come to through redemption. He is doing a work with those who have given their lives to Jesus. So when Jesus came because he has a labor to do, he had to keep talking to his father every day, every hour, every minute. Because with the labor that we are going to labor for God, if we will not be a people that can speak to our God throughout, we might miss the theme of the year. So because the work of the redemption, that what he had come to do, it was a heavy work. The one who had the roadmap was his father God. He's the one who used to tell him, now go to, to Bethany. Now go to, so how will he know where he needs to go if he had not talked to his father? If Jesus, who is our savior, talk to the father, how much more will we need to talk to our father today? How much more? Huh? If in the time of Jesus there were legion, a legion could have been like, um, a legion was a, a, a sect of our soldiers numbering around 6,000. You are in charge of like 6,000. So now, a legion, <laughs> Demons, if it were legion, 6,000 in the time of Jesus. Sayi ni mangapi? How many demons do you think now they are operating in one person today? Huh? Or in the world today? Hmm? Simiongezeka, sinikweli. So now, how much more do we need to speak to our father? Hmm? We need to speak to God on constant basis so that we know our going out and our coming in. What the Lord requires you to do so that he can whisper to you. If we don't spend time in prayer, we will not achieve anything this year. Our labor will be futile because you will become a junk of all trade and a master of none. Jesus had to spend time in prayer so that he can accomplish the work of redemption. It wasn't easy. So if we don't pray, then we won't accomplish also the work we are supposed to do this year. Who is supposed to pray again? Anyone who has given their life to Jesus. If you have a relationship with God, then we have to talk to our father. This father is different than our fathers. How is he different? The Bible tells me we will not ask him for bread and he gives us a stone. Hallelujah. Such a wise father. <laughs> huh? Your father may have denied you or given you a stone instead of fee of bread, right? But this father God is a very peculiar father. And I want to introduce you to this father so that you may have the interest to talk to this father. He will not give you a stone when you ask him for bread. This father will not give you a scorpion when you ask for a fish. Hallelujah. What a father. He knows how to give his children best gifts, right? This father he is very good. This father has ears to hear our petitions. He hears. When you talk to him, he hears. When you talk to him, he responds. So the reason why we don't have response is because we've also talked 
nothing. We've told him nothing. So you tell him nothing, then you get nothing. So the question, pastor, but God knows even the problems that I go through. He even knows that I'm hungry. He even he knows that I need this. Why can't he just give me? <laughs> he's not demanding we, we ask him so that we can know that he's a superior being. No. It's not that he's limited to give to us. It's not that he's not seeing. But he wants a relationship. He wants a relationship. So if the relationship is not good, <laughs> even when he gives you not appreciate, you think you picked it on the way and you go your way. He wants a relationship. That's why he wants you to say it the way it is. He wants you to show him the way it is. He wants you to speak to him. You remember that story when, he, when the blind man was calling out, Jesus, son of God, son of David, have mercy on me. What did Jesus ask him? What do you want me to do to you? You want to tell me Jesus needed to wear glasses to see this man was blind? Huh? Huh? Was he seeing that Bartimaeus was blind? <laughs> did he know? <laughs> so why is Jesus asking him, what do you want me to do? Why is Jesus asking this question? It's because he wants a relationship. Talk to me now. What do you want me to do to you? So he knows our problems. He knows our issues. But he wants a relationship. He wants us to talk to him. He is a God who hears and answers. He says you never leave us, nor forsake us. He is a merciful God. Huh? He is a merciful God. So even when we talk to him, he is able to show his mercy to us. He is a gracious God, a gracious father. He says, even when your father and mother leave you, I'll never leave you. What a father. He is able to do exceedingly above even what we ask. So you can ask some things more and he does a greater work, a greater miracle. So I want us to have a relationship with God so that when we say we want to pray, you are not looking, what are they talking about? How can someone pray for three hours? You can talk to your father. If you have a good relationship with your father, when you call him, will you have a problem with the, how long you talk? Huh? You talk good things, you talk nonsense, you know, silly stuff. You laugh, you cry together. Because you have what? A relationship. I want us to come and have this relationship with God our Father so that we can be able to pray, so that we can be able to do the labor that we are supposed to do this year. Otherwise, how will we labor in the vineyard of the one who has called us and we don't talk to him? When we pray, there's something that happens all the time. Yeah? That's what brings the difference. You have because you ask. You don't have because you didn't ask. That's all the difference we have with the Christians in the church. Those who ask, they receive. Did he say that? You knock and the door shall be open. You seek and you'll find. This is not the prayer of beginners. This is a prayer for all. When we spend time with your father, huh? 
Will he not release some secrets to you? Will he? Huh? So when you talk to your father, he will tell you some secrets he'll download to you. So that will be the difference. <laughs> those who pray and those who don't pray. Those who pray, they have some download and you always wonder, there has to be a download. <laughs> because if you are, have a relationship with God, he'll tell you some things. That's why today we have Christians who are walking blindly. They don't know where they are going. Just because they have no understanding. Because there is no download from your father. He will tell you, he will tell you secrets of his heart. Anyone who shares with you a secret, doesn't he empower you? He does. So you become a powerful Christian. When we pray, he reveals some things to us. You walk with understanding. You don't see, you know, I get surprised when I see Christians walking as ordinary men. <laughs> In this wicked world. When we pray, the Lord reveals some things to us. He gives you an understanding. The revelation, you know, oh, one plus one is not 11. It's two, because there are two sticks. They don't mean it's 11. <laughs> it can be two, right? And the two, you don't write one, one. You write it two, nicely, right? It's one word, one letter, whatever. <laughs> huh? So now, today we have Christians who are walking like ordinary men. If we are going to labor in the vineyard of the Lord, <laughs> without revelation, you'll come out with nothing. Yeah? You know what will happen? You'll be an evangelist, for example, and you're going to fish men. And because you don't have the understanding, you will carry the, the big net with big holes, and yet you are going to catch omena. Will you come home with some fish? Huh? Will you come home with fish? <laughs> because what fishes omena is not the same net that fishes tilapia, the big fish, Right? So without prayer, you will not understand even the weapon to engage in the field of your labor. Then you'll come home empty-handed. And you say, Fanya kazi fanya, fanya kazi fanya. Huh? Somewhere, working, working somewhere, but working at loss. Jesus never went lost. He accomplished the labor, the labor of redemption. He brought it to the very end. If this year we are going to accomplish laboring in the field of the Lord, then we have to talk to God more. This is the year that you need to talk less and talk to God more. But you know what? I've realized those people who talk more, they pray less. And those people who pray more, they talk less. There's no way you can come from talking to God and you go to gossip. Is that, is that possible? <laughs> it's not possible. In fact, when you come from prayer, you don't want to talk to anybody. You feel like they'll make you dirty. Don't want the nonsense. True or false? I'm calling us back to prayer. I'm calling the church back to prayer. We have to come back to start talking to God on a serious note. We have to come back and you have a timetable when you are going to pray and talk to your God. And when that time comes, you are serious about it. What Jesus one time Jesus went to pray with his disciples. 
and he left them just this way. He went a little bit ahead. He comes back and he finds them snoring. He wakes them and says, Peter, please pray <laughs> before you get into temptation. He goes back again. Peter says, yeah, 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 Lord, we are going to pray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he goes there sleeping again. And he asks them, you wouldn't have tarried with me for this one hour. Huh? So at least we can say the basic that we need to pray is one hour. There's no power in the church today because people don't pray. We are depending on prayer of two or three people in the church. If Bishop doesn't pray, then we are done. <laughs> if we waited, you pray for us, then there will be no church here. Huh? Or you want us to say now we are going to have in courts, intercessors. <laughs> for the church. <laughs> That's what you want. Huh? No. Will you tarry for me for one hour? They are at Mount Olives. Mount Olives means the pressing of the oil. The pressing place. Pressing. Where they press the olives after they are harvested, then they can get oil. <coughs> Where they crush the olives so that they can get oil. <laughs> so the place of prayer, the place of crushing, so that we can get what? Oil. So what are the purposes of the oil? We use oil for what? Huh? We use oil for what? Huh? What do we use? Bless me. What do you use oil for? Cooking. And what else? Huh? Light. What else? Cosmetics, what else? Hmm? What? Lubrication. What else? Anointing the sick to bring healing. What else? Huh? What else do we use the oil for? Even a bombing, they use some kinds of oils, right? So now, what are we saying? When you come at the place of prayer, you'll walk in the light. There will be light in your life. Amen. <laughs> when you come at the place of prayer, huh? you'll be beautiful. <laughs> yeah? When we come to the place of prayer, there will be revelation. When we come to the place of prayer, you will be preserved. When we come to the place of prayer, you will be satisfied. You will be satisfied. Why are people in the church and they are sinning? You live there, you go and go back to the sin. You've always continued. It's because your prayer life is lacking. If you pray and you are talking to your father, there will be that satisfaction. You'll be full. You'll be fed. There will be light. You'll see where you are stepping. <laughs> you'll see the things that are in darkness and you'll understand. So I'm calling us, church, to come to the place of prayer. It's like the Lord is drawing us to our Mount Olives this year because there's a work to be done. 
you sleep like Peter, you are going to cut someone's, you will become physical or you will become <laughs> the works of the flesh. Sini kweli? Ha? Si alikata mtu sikio? Eh? Mana guomba, alilala, saya mao, ya maombi. Can you tarry with me for one hour, Jesus asked. Are we able to tarry with him one hour? Hmm? Are we able to tarry with him one hour? Uh, tomorrow I'll photocopy a chart that can help you to pray for one hour. One hour you can divide it with five minutes. Five minutes of thanksgiving, five minutes of praise, five minutes. So that you can sit down and start bringing your heart to a place where you can, you can pray at least one hour. You can pray and talk to your father. Otherwise, we are going to have very weak Christians in the Holy Ghost Church. <laughs> right? Even Peter spent time in prayer. How many times did he used to go to the temple? Huh? How many times? Huh? <laughs> Do we see disciples running to the temple to go and pray? They used to have, to have prayer meetings in the home fellowships. Huh? How many times did Daniel used to pray? Three times. And you, you want to be like Daniel. You want to do exploits. You want God to do great things. And yet you can't even pray for five minutes. How is this going to happen? Hello, church. How is this going to happen? How are you going to change the dark world? Huh? You know, one time, this, I read a testimony of one of the pastors who was praying and fasting. And God showed him that uh, the prayers of the Christians, they could not penetrate because the bigger house of prayer in that area was not the church. It was the temples of blah, blah. So which means <laughs> the order of the enemy in that area, there was more prayer prayed in that order than the church. Are you understanding? And the bigger house of prayer, it rules. Right? The bigger house of prayer rules you. It's the one in control. So now, if, let's now come down like this. If the witchcraft, the witch doctor in our area is the one who prays more in his altar, and you, you pray for five minutes, will you overcome? Will you overcome? Huh? The, the issue is, or the truth is, you don't pray, there's also those who are praying. They are also praying. Even when you don't pray, they are praying. And the prayers affect an area. Amen. We want to raise prayer. Prayers affect an area. If the children of God won't pray in this area, those who pray more, they will take control over the city. Even your family, <laughs> the wicked are praying more. <laughs> they will take control of your family. But the Lord wants us to take control. That's why he wants us to talk to him. That's how Jesus took control over the situations. Because he talked quite often with his father. Day in, day out. Night during the day. Now we have another problem. <laughs> Today Christians, at night they are sleeping... And no, 
Yeah, and they want to pray during the day. Excuse me, the hours of the day are for work. <laughs> sour, sour. Jesus gave, said what? We have 12 hours to work. So I'm not saying you cannot pray during the day, but now see where you need to fix your prayers, the timings. Sinikweli. Wachawi wanaroga mchana. Nakutana, kuna siku mchana, umekutana mchaya kiuwa uchi. Wanapatika nanga sangapi. Eh? Wakristo, nimechoka. Hey, unalala mpaka six to six. Taisha. Taisha. <laughs> Wanya ni kuambia ukweli utaisha. Alafu unamuka kumanga kitheri ya subui. Unakimbia utarogu huko. Ni kazi tuwaendelea kufanya hapa ya kutoa mapepo tu. Si kweli. Tuamuke tufanya nini? Tuombe. Ongeza maombi. Ndiyo nguvu za mungu zifanya nini? Zipate kuonekana. The Lord wants us to take prayer seriously this year. If there is going to be change in our lives, we have to. Huh? You know, prayer has been taught, has been taught, has been taught. But you know what? Me this year, I want action. I want to hear you pray. I want action. Sinikweli. Tuache maneno ya kusomeshwa, kusomeshwa, kusomeshwa. Ingina inaingia hapa, inapitia hapa. <laughs> we want action. This is a year of action. One eleven in any city action. It's a year of action. So if it's to pray, can we pray? So that we are not going to be overcome by the enemy. Peter, arise and pray so that you don't get into temptation. <laughs> he never prayed. He got into the very temptation. Church, arise and pray so that you don't get into temptation. We don't pray and we fall into temptation. If we pray, we shall overcome. What does the Bible say? Resist the enemy and he shall flee from you. Sinikweli. Huh? Sinikweli. But how will we resist him? Through prayer. I want us to arise. And I want you to ask the Lord to restore prayer in your life. Hii si ile maombi tunaanza kuomba leo unasema ah leo naweka kalenda alafu kesho au uombi unaomba once once a month we want it to be regular prayer where you are talking to your father regularly quite often we have said our god hears he answers he hears and he answers that's the difference between him and other gods. He knows how to give us good gifts. I want you to talk to the Father tonight. First of all, we repent for not being able to talk to him. And ask him now, in the name of Jesus, to empower you tonight. So that you can offer the prayers. You can be in the place of prayer quite often. Mukrisu ambaya hombi. Atanguka tu kwa dhambi. Ata toboa. Na kuambia ukweli. Kama unataka kwenda mbinguni. <laughs> lazima utaomba. Majaribu ya dunia hii ni mengi sana. Na ni mazito sana. Autaepa, autaepuka. Kwa hivyo ni lazima mungu atusaidie. Tujue nchinzi ya kuomba. Kuomba kwa anjili ya maisha yetu. Kuomba kwa anjili ya, ya mize yetu. Kuomba kwa anjili ya kanisa. Kuomba kwa anjili ya wengine. Mungu atusaidie. Fungua kinywa chako ungena mungu. 
Fungua kinywa chako uunge na Mungu jioni ya leo. We give you glory our Father. Worship you our God. You are worthy our King. Put the desire to pray in our hearts. To me is to talk to you. To me is to talk to you. That our hearts will yearn to talk to you on a regular basis. Give us desire to spend time with you. To spend time with you. Great of heaven and earth. Our Father. You also desire to spend time with us. Help us to spend time with you. Touch each one of us, O oh Lord, that the desire to talk to our Father will be burning in us, O oh Lord. Will burn in us intensely, our King. That, Lord, it will be like if we don't talk to our daddy. It's like we've not eaten. It's like we've not drunk water. It's like we are thirsty. Teach us how to pray, Lord, as your disciples said and asked you. Teach even the new believers how to pray. Teach us how to talk to you, our Father, for you are our God. We desire you. We desire to walk with you. We desire to hear from you. We desire to engage with you. We desire to communicate with you. We desire to communion with you. In the secret place, O oh God, draw us nigh unto you, Lord. Draw us nigh to you. Tazama, wewe ni mungu, mungu wa wate wenye mili. Je, kuna neno, gumu lolote. Usilo liweza tazama mimi ni mungu mungu wa wote wenye mini je.
Lord, I thank you. I glorify your name. I bless your people as they go home. Let there be reawakening of prayer in the hearts of your people, Lord. Even David said, even on my bed, I pray to the Father. My heart communes with my God. May it be so with each one of us here, Lord, that my Father will be able to achieve. We may be able to prevail. We may be able to overcome temptations. We may be able to win. We may be able to overcome. We may be able to stand even in times of trials and times of testings. Bless them, Lord. And I pray, my Father, that there will be prayer from each one of us coming to heaven, Lord. You rejoice when you hear the voices of your children talking to you, my Father. You are our God. We desire to come even this year to the Holy of Holies and spend time with you. Spend time with you. Spend time with you. Spend time with you. Let prayer arise from here, Lord, to the heavens. We give you glory, our Father, and we magnify your name. We bless your name, Lord. Be exalted, be lifted high. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.